One of the deadliest genocides in human history occurred in 1971, which saw the deaths and rapes of hundreds of thousands of Bengalis. The 1971 Bangladesh Genocide To understand why this happened, one must go back 24 years, soon after the end of World War II. When the British colony of India achieved its independence from the United Kingdom, it was partitioned to the predominantly Hindu dominion of India and the mostly Muslim dominion of Pakistan. This division was based on the two-nation theory, which was the idea that the nations of the Indian subcontinent were based on religion, rather than language or ethnicity. This resulted in the separation of the Bengali people, who lived in the area of Bengal, into the Indian state of West Bengal and the Pakistani province of East Bengal, later renamed to East Pakistan. In the following decades, a dynamic of exploitation and domination formed between the two areas of Pakistan. Despite the fact that East Pakistan had the majority of the population and also contributed the most to Pakistan's economy, West Pakistan was the base of the government, the military, and received over two-thirds of government spending. This was because West Pakistanis looked down upon Bengalis, considering them racially inferior and religiously impure. This inequality made the Bengalis of East Pakistan wish for self-determination, which showed in 1970 was the first Pakistani general election. The Awami League, led by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who demanded greater autonomy for East Pakistan, won 160 out of 300 seats, exclusively from the more populous province of East Pakistan. This gave the party majority in the National Assembly of Pakistan and should have resulted in an East Pakistan-led government with Mujib as Prime Minister. However, the reigning West Pakistani government was loath to allow this to happen. President Yahya Khan delayed and eventually postponed the convening of the National Assembly. This sparked major unrest and civil disobedience in East Pakistan with the aim of securing independence from Pakistan. In the weeks that followed, thousands of Bengali rioters were killed by Pakistani soldiers. However, Bengalis themselves also killed, especially targeting the Bihari people, who are pro-Pakistan. Hundreds of Biharis were massacred in the city riots of East Pakistan. This was the official justification for the genocidal military crackdown that was to follow, codenamed Operation Searchlight. In the closing hours of March 25, 1971, the West Pakistani army entered into East Pakistan cities with the goal of crushing the Awami League and Bengali nationalism. The Awami League members that did not escape were arrested or killed. The next day saw a massacre of hundreds of students and professors of Dhaka University while death squads in the city streets killed thousands. It was on this day that East Pakistan officially declared independence as the new country of Bangladesh. Resistance to the genocide came from the provisional Bangladesh government housed in India and the Mukti Bahini, the guerrilla fighters of Bengali resistance. However, against the tens of thousands of Pakistani soldiers and pro-Pakistani Bengali militiamen called the Razakars, it was not enough. The invading forces pillaged the land, burning mosques, temples, schools, and houses. The genocide targeted Bengali men, students, and intellectuals because those were the most likely to join the resistance in order to fight the Bengali self-determination. In addition, the genocide involved religious cleansing as non-Muslim men, especially Hindus, were hunted and executed without quarter. Women and children were sometimes not killed. However, thousands of girls were taken as sex slaves and hundreds of thousands of women were raped. The killing was deliberate and organized. For an example, the Demra Massacre. On May 13, Pakistani troops were led to the remote village of Baushgari by a collaborator named Assad. Hindus had taken shelter there attempting to flee the genocide. Unfortunately, they were unsuccessful. At nightfall, the men were forced to stand in a line while the women were raped in front of them. After they were almost all shot to death by light machine guns and the houses were set on fire. The next morning, the few survivors buried the charred corpses of the victims in mass graves. Around 350 Hindus were killed, a fraction of the total killed that day in Bangladesh. As the genocide continued day by day, massacre after massacre, 30 million people were displaced with eventually 10 million fleeing into nearby India to live in refugee camps. This put a huge strain on India's economy and so in May, India began assisting the Bangladeshi resistance with training and supplies in order to help end the conflict. This increased the historically volatile tensions between India and West Pakistan and so war between them was quickly becoming inevitable. On December 3rd, the Pakistani Air Force launched a preemptive strike on Indian airfields starting the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. With far superior numbers and equipment and the help of the Mukti Bahini, the Indian army swiftly and decisively took the Bangladesh capital of Dhaka. On December 16, 
13 days after the military intervention of India, the Pakistani forces in East Pakistan surrendered, ending the genocide. With so much carnage, the victim count ranges greatly. There were an estimated 200,000 to 400,000 women raped and 300,000 to 3 million deaths. However, the repercussions dealt to Pakistan were mostly consequences of them losing the war, rather than from committing a genocide. From their surrender, Pakistan lost a significant portion of their military as well as East Pakistan, which included most of Pakistan's population and economy. The only punishment for Pakistan military junta, who planned and oversaw the genocide, was political. For example, the president of Pakistan, General Yahya Khan, resigned, replaced by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Bangladesh has generally only managed to pr punish pro-Pakistan Bangladeshi war criminals. In 1974, Bangladesh called upon Pakistan to persecute 195 military officers for war crimes and genocide under international law. But Pakistan failed to bring the perpetrators to account. Still, increasing pressure from the government and citizens of Bangladesh it resulted in the creation of a domestic war crimes tribunal in Bangladesh in 2009, the International Crimes Tribunal. Nine leaders of Jamaat-e Islami, the largest Islamist political party in the nation who were involved in the brutal Razakar militias, were persecuted for their involvement in the 1971 genocide by the tribunal. They were sentenced to either life imprisonment or death for their war crimes. While the genocide was a horrible event, its victims' lives were not in vain. By the ending of their bloodshed, Bengalis finally achieved their goal of self-determination and gained their own independent nation-state Bangladesh.